everyone, it's Amanda with You Pray Crunch, and welcome to today's vulnerable video. <laughs> it's been on my heart to talk about this on my channel for quite a while, but quite frankly, I have been scared to. Because of how nasty people can be on YouTube sometimes, and also because I am not here on my channel to be divisive. You know, I want my channel to be a place that is welcome for everyone, absolutely everyone. And I think what I have come to realize is because of the name of my channel, Eat, Pray, Crunch, um, I think the title of my channel maybe attracts a certain population of people, which is great. Um, but I think that there is a segment of that population that thinks that I am something that I maybe am not. And I feel like I really want to be transparent about it on my channel. And I feel like it's important to be transparent about who I really am. Um, for one, I don't want people to think that I am something that I am not. And two, I don't, you know, I also want people who are of a similar mindset as me to feel like they are not alone out there. Because I feel like there are a lot of folks like me out there, but people like me don't necessarily have the loudest voices out there. Now, <laughs> Everything I'm saying right now is sounding so vague and everything, but I will get into specifics and you'll know what I mean. So what I'm talking about is my faith journey as a Christian. So let me start off by talking about a little about me and my story and um, how I came to be a Christian and came to be the uh, kind of Christian that I am. First of all, I was raised in a secular household. One of my parents' side, my grandparents considered themselves, even back in the like 20s, 30s, 40s, to be like free thinkers. Um, they had been raised religious, but they stepped away from religion back then. And so my dad was raised in a pretty secular household. Uh, he went to church a few times because his dad thought that it would be important cultural experience for him, but he hated it and he never wanted to go. He later came to a more open-minded faith later in life, which he still has now. My mom was raised in a Methodist, a United Methodist household. My grandparents were Methodist and very, very involved in the church, but when my mom went to college, she kind of developed her own spiritual belief system after that and became a little more free thinking and secular after that, especially after uh, meeting my dad and they had a lot in common and um, had a similar worldview in that way. And so that was how they raised me. They raised me in a pretty secular household. It was a very wonderful upbringing. I was an only child. Um, wonderful loving parents. I love my parents. Like I am so grateful to this day for uh, the upbringing that I had because it was such a solid, stable, loving household. And ironically enough, just has and aside, looking back now, I feel like my upbringing was much more Christian in terms of value, in terms of how love was emphasized, um, much more so than many people I know who were overtly raised in a Christian household, um, who very much did not experience the love of God in their upbringing. <laughs> so I find it kind of ironic in that way that I very much, even though I didn't know that's what it was or have a name for it when I was a kid, I very much felt the love of God th 
through my family and I still do to this day. We're very close. But I was raised to think for myself. And I do remember as a kid, my dad read some of the Bible to me because he thought it was culturally relevant for me to know, which he was right. <laughs> it was important for me to know. And I remember even as a small kid asking big philosophical questions about where we come from and how humans came about with evolution and creation and to this day I still think those things are not mutually exclusive um, but I remember just seeing the beauty in all of that as a kid and just being in awe by it and by nature and seeing God in nature. Um, my parents were very supportive in me having my own spirituality when I was a kid. They never told me there was anything I should or should not believe so they were very open to me exploring my own spirituality which I am really thankful for, and that is honestly how it should be. I feel like I always believed in God. To this day, my parents believe in a higher power as well, um, even though they don't subscribe to a specific religion or set of dogmas or doctrines. Um, they still have a, a belief in God and a very high set of moral standards, you could say. And so I'm really thankful for that, that I was able to explore my spirituality all throughout my childhood and into adulthood. Um, so like I said, I always felt like I had a relationship with God, even though I didn't know for sure what that was or what that meant. Um, I always felt God's presence in my life a lot when I was a kid and especially when I was in nature and that kind of thing. You know, I had friends throughout school who were different varieties of Christian. It's probably relevant for me to say that, you know, I live in Washington, I live in the Seattle area. Um, that's where I grew up and that's where I still live now. So it's probably pretty well known that the Seattle area is a relatively progressive, forward-thinking place. Um, and that was also an influence in my, I would say, my education and just the people that I was surrounded by throughout my childhood and my teenage years and that kind of thing. Um, and I would say that that helped to some degree shape my worldview as well. Um, that's just kind of an aside. So anyway, when I was 16, I had many friends around me who were Christian and I think that that did have an influence on me in my teenage years. Granted, I did a lot of the like honors classes and stuff in high school. I did the IB program if any of you know what that is and so a lot of my peers that were my friends were you know pretty intelligent people, very um, philosophical people, very nuanced people who valued critical thinking. And that was also an influence on me. And a number of those people were also Christian. And that was, I think, a big influence on me in a really positive way. I remember talking with a lot of my friends at the time about philosophy and the big questions of life. I was just fascinated with the big questions of life. Um, I later became a philosophy major in college, but I'll talk about that later. So I've always been interested in the big questions. My friends and I would just, we'd have slumber parties and we'd stay up all night talking about the theory of relativity. <laughs> we were such nerds, I love it. Um, or, you know, just talking about epistemology, how do we know what we know, that kind of thing. You know, it just got a lot of wheels turning. Um, and I remember at that time thinking like, I really feel like I have a connection with the higher power, whatever that may be. Like I always had had, but I really wanted to explore that deeper when I was a teenager. And I did. I jumped into a full-blown <laughs> research project, completely of my own volition. This wasn't for school or anything. Um, you know, this was the beginning of the internet. I was a teenager, you know, when I was 16, that was the year 2000, I'm 38 now. Um, 
And so, you know, the internet was getting going and information was becoming much more widely available and easily accessible. We got the internet at home and that was a big deal. Google came into existence. Um, and of course, just the library. I could always go to the library and get books as well, but I just dove in head first. I wanted to know everything there was to know about all of the world religions. And I wanted to find truth and how I should live my life and how I could have a relationship with the divine. And I really enjoyed learning about all of the different religions and I found that there were a lot of common threads running through all of the religions, like the golden rule, treat others the way you want to be treated yourself. And themes of love and beauty and, you know, loving others, caring for others, all of those themes that ran through all of the major world religions. I found that compelling. Meanwhile, I also did have a number of Christian friends and um, I started going to church with them because I was curious and I would go to some of their youth groups and that kind of thing. And I remember even at one point I had a friend whose youth pastor emailed with me. You know, I asked all these really hard theological questions and this youth pastor took the time to, you know, discuss it with me and I was like, wow, this is really great that this person is, you know, not just turned off by my questions or saying you shouldn't be asking those questions or, um, you know, don't, you shouldn't be thinking those things or whatever the case may be. He took the time and I was like, wow, that's really cool that this pastor was taking the time to answer my questions. And he said, I don't know when he didn't know. And that humility was compelling to me. I had the same attitude from a lot of my Christian friends. Granted, you know, I lived in a relatively progressive place. And so even my Christian friends were fairly open-minded um, and were just very welcoming to my questions and non-judgmental. Um, and I really felt like they were displaying the character of Jesus. And so I started to learn more about Jesus. I started reading the Bible on my own. And given that I was not raised with religion myself, basically my beliefs that I started to build were entirely my own. I wasn't spoon fed any sort of doctrines or dogmas or anything like that. You know, I was just reading the Bible myself and drawing my own conclusions about it. And I am so thankful that that was the way I came to faith, that I was able to explore it freely and to develop my own thoughts and opinions and beliefs surrounding that. And while per se my parents didn't want to go to church with me, they were supportive of me in this exploration. I was starting to find the way of Jesus to be very compelling. The whole um, love your enemies thing <laughs> was very compelling to me because doing that goes against our very flawed human nature to want to just stick to our own kind and be tribalistic in, th in thinking. But this idea of loving your enemy and breaking down barriers and unifying and doing so in the name of love. In the name of love. Sorry, I had to throw that in there. <laughs> and reading Jesus' Sermon on the Mount reading the actual red letters, the things that Jesus was saying about clothing the naked, feeding the hungry, basically fighting oppression. All of that was very compelling to me because these are the nitty gritty when you get down to it, when you are doing the hard work in your heart and your mind, those are the things that are going to change the world and make it a better place. And I really was compelled by the way of Jesus. At the same time, I did have a few conservative Christian friends as well, and 
you know, I was fully aware of their worldview and the view that Jesus is the only way to access God. And the whole time I couldn't bring myself to believe that Jesus was the only way to access God. I was more compelled by the character of Jesus and wanting my life to emulate the way Jesus lived his life. It was not so much the turn or burn, heaven or hell narrative that was convincing to me. In fact, Jesus doesn't talk very much about that. It, he talks a lot more about love and reaching people's hearts and caring for the unloved and the oppressed and the downcast in society. Jesus talks day and night about that and very little about heaven and hell. So I was aware of the more conservative view of Jesus, but that was not the belief system that I was actively constructing in my teenage years. So it was really because, I know I'm going to get all sorts of people telling me I'm not a real Christian or whatever, like people can say what they're going to say, I am speaking my truth. But I strongly believe that Jesus was the original social justice warrior. You know, what he was doing was radically progressive for his time. He was breaking down religious institutions. He was breaking down political institutions. He was saying things that go against human nature. He was going against the grain. And that was, for his time, radical, radically progressive. And honestly, that was part of why I was so drawn to Jesus was because seeing what he did was so radically progressive and world-changing in the best way possible. You know, throughout the years and to this day, <laughs> I'm still baffled how people come to view this gentle, kind, loving Jesus that's described in the New Testament as this warlord for God. <laughs> I'm still perplexed by it to this day. So when I was 16, I had a very, I guess you could say, religious experience. I had a very, very intense spiritual encounter with God. The only way I could describe it was that I was just existing in my soul. It was almost like an out-of-body kind of experience. I felt like I was just kind of like existing without being in my body and that I was like in the presence of God and God was gently and lovingly, but intensely, <laughs> inviting me to have relationship with him. And so that day I gave my life to God and I became a Christian. It's been an amazing journey ever since. Not easy, but amazing. My relationship with God ever since has been very real. I really think that Jesus just came to show us how to have a relationship with God. People are going to come for me for this. I don't care what people think. This is my truth. I think that Jesus was perhaps one of many messengers from God that, you know, people who had an unusually powerful connection with God that most human beings don't. That said, I still think that Jesus was fully human, but showed us how to have a relationship with God because he had such a powerful connection with God and had wisdom, divine wisdom, coming from God that, you know, was a message. He was a messenger of sorts of God and came to teach us how to be better people and how to make the world a better place. And that is still my theology to this day. I think that there have been others as well, other human beings that have reached different populations in different parts of the world throughout history in different ways and like in ways that the, that set of people would understand. I don't believe that Jesus is the only way to access God, but he is one of the most compelling ways in my experience, but not the only way. 
ultimately, Jesus' way of life, Jesus' message is what I live by in loving others, or that God manifests in our lives through love, and God works in the world through love, and that was the message of Jesus. And it is our job to do that, just to love. That's what it comes down to. To me, it's not about all of this orthodoxy of right belief. I think people throughout history have really gotten out in the weeds when it comes to making religious traditions law, like legalistic. And that has created a lot of unfortunate, toxic religious systems. And I have very much come to see that throughout my lifetime. I've seen, you know, I live in the United States. I've seen the polarization. It's always been there, but it's radicalized. It's deepened in the United States. And I think it's really unfortunate, all of these things that are done in the name of Jesus, in the name of God. Granted, it's not like it's the first time something like that has ever happened in history where horrible things are done in the name of God, like the Crusades and forced state religion or else you are executed kind of thing. <laughs> Humans in their imperfect ways have just gone and unfortunately messed it all up and missed the point. <laughs> the point is love. That is my story. That is how I have come to my, you know, some people would call it progressive Christianity. You could put that label on it if you want to, but really this is the conclusions that I have come to in my own spiritual journey. Thinking for myself through praying and having a relationship with God and having God guide my heart rather than having culture guide my heart, rather than having religious institutions guide my heart. Through that, I have come to this flavor of faith, you could say. And it, it's basically because of the way of Jesus <laughs> that I am a progressive Christian, because what Jesus was doing was radically progressive. And I think that it is world changing and something that we all need to be doing today. You know, I have had all sorts of conservative Christians tell me that I'm not a real Christian. I've had all sorts of people say that my beliefs are flawed and that I don't really get it and that I am misguided and, you know, all of these things coming from a more legalistic standpoint. Honestly, I just brush it off because I'm sorry. I am just reading the red letters of Jesus in the Bible, and these are the conclusions that I have come to, come to on my own, with my own relationship with God, without the... I mean, obviously I'm influenced by people, but I filter that through my own lens of critical thinking. And, you know, so I, you know, take some people's viewpoints and leave other people's viewpoints that kind of thing, but in the in the end, it's me making my own faith system. As a related thing, throughout my faith journey, I've seen so many people who claim the name of Jesus, who they are very overtly religious per se, but their lived life looks nothing like the way of Jesus. Lots of hate and bigotry and racism and classism and narcissism, <laughs> might I add. Not saying that's true of everyone, but I think that fundamentalist Christianity often attracts a lot of narcissists and abusers because they use it as a way, as a facade to hide behind and use all of the rules to control the people around them. Granted, that's not everyone. I think a lot of people are just raised in a very conservative evangelical worldview. And I think a lot of people just don't even see the deep level of hypocrisy that's going on. Um, claiming Jesus, but you know, their behavior looks totally different in real life. And this has always been so perplexing to me. <laughs> because I see these people 
behaving this way. And I'm like, are we reading the same red letters? Because what I'm reading in the Bible is about unconditional love and acceptance and tolerance. And I'm seeing anything but that. And I see people do all sorts of mental gymnastics to skirt around that. And it, it baffles me. It quite frankly baffles me. There was a church that we belonged to several years ago that they featured this movie called Lord Save Us From Your Followers. <laughs> and if you can find that, I'm not sure if it's on Netflix, it might even be on YouTube. Search it, look it up. It's a great one. Lord Save Us From Your Followers. Um, just pointing out this exact thing. People oppressing other people in the name of Jesus, which is the exact opposite of what Jesus was all about. So just as an aside, that's something that Bill and I call it devangelism, not evangelism, devangelism, because I have seen this happen in so many people where, you know, people see Christians acting a certain way and then they read the words of Jesus and there's this disconnect. They're like, huh? <laughs> they see so much harm done in the name of Christianity and it turns people away from Christ. It turns people away from God completely, which is so unfortunate, which is the exact opposite of what Jesus wanted. It is the exact opposite of what God wants to love all people and to love all people through us. Anyway, that's that's always been kind of a perplexing part of my journey and it still is today. You know, a lot of the evangelical world is wondering why so many people are fleeing religion today. It's not because of Satan. It's not being influenced by leftist agendas or whatever. It's because people are thinking for themselves and seeing that the belief and the behavior are not lining up. I challenge people to wrestle with that a little bit. Anyway, so that is my story. I feel like it was important for me to tell my story and the background of why I have the faith worldview that I have, because the pray part of each pray crunch is a very valid part of who I am and my experience and my life. My faith is very real. I have a very deep relationship with God and I am daily trying to follow the way of Jesus. So I have a very deep faith, even though I've been told by so many people that my version of Christianity is not real, but it is my truth. I'm going to live my authentic life. I'm going to live my authentic faith, and I'm not going to apologize for that. I think in the last couple years on my channel, a lot of conservative Christians have come to my channel expecting it to be conservative Christianity, you know, talking about the prey and the crunch. And sometimes there, I mean, there's kind of a subculture of crunchy conservative Christians. <laughs> and I think that there are people who come to my channel expecting me to be that, and I'm not. The crunch part of my channel is because I have an environmentalist streak. I care about our planet, I care about our earth, and I like to do things naturally when possible and in ways that are being a steward of the earth. And that's where the crunch comes from. And so I think a lot of people just think that I mean something else when I say eat, pray, crunch. <laughs> But I just want to be transparent that this is what I mean by it. And just be out and open that, you know, I think, honestly, when it comes down to it, I would say that my my political leanings, I don't fall in any sort of box in political leanings, but if I had to define it, I would say that I am moderately progressive. I'm sure the people on the far right would look at moderate and think that moderate is, is radical, progressive. <laughs> it's all relative though. I think in the grand scheme of things, I'm kind of moderate, a moderate progressive because of the teachings of Jesus. That is why I believe what I believe. And so I just wanted to put that out there. It's being really vulnerable telling you guys my whole faith story. And I really don't want to cause division of any kind. Like because of my belief in love, because that's what Jesus taught us, I really do want to unify people. I would love for my channel to be a place where people of all walks of life and all different kinds of faiths even 
different kinds of Christians can come together and listen to each other and maybe learn something from one another. But I think it's really important that I just put that out there, that this is who I really am. I should say that my husband, Bill, um, he and I have a very similar faith in that way and have a very similar worldview. That's honestly what attracted us to each other 12, 13 years ago now um, was because of that. We had both felt when we found each other that we kind of felt, you know, this magical unicorn in each other that we were progressive because of our faith. And that is something that we share. And that is something that we really want to share with our children as well. I'll be making a video next about why we choose secular homeschool curriculum because that is related to all of this. So keep a lookout for that video next. Anyway, if you guys made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for keeping it respectful and having an open heart and an open mind. I think that I'm going to be a little more open that this is my variety of faith a little more on my channel from now on because I really feel like there are a lot of people like myself out there, but their voices get drowned out in the radical voices on both the left and the right. Radical voices of all kinds are the loudest and that's what people hear the most and they think that's what it means to be a liberal or be a conservative or to be a Christian. That You know, when people hear those words, they think it means a certain thing. And I think that's just not true for a lot of people. I think most people really are more moderate and fall somewhere in the middle. Um, and there are more people that have more nuanced views of the world, not such black and white thinking that is in both extremes. Because nuance is another theme of my life. Understanding nuance is where it's at, people. <laughs> you have to understand that the world is in shades of gray and nuance. There are so many people who actually understand that out there and have those more moderate beliefs, be it if it leans a little more conservative or leans a little more progressive, but they're able to think in those shades of gray more. And I think that that really is actually the vast majority of people, but those voices are not the loudest. It's just the quiet majority. <laughs> and so that's why I'm speaking up because I want to put my voice out there that if this is an experience that you have as well, you're not alone and there are a lot of us out there and I want us all to find each other. So this is all just to say, you're not alone, we're out here. And so I just wanted to, you know, build some community around that. But I also just want it to be a place where everyone can feel safe and accepted and loved because that is my life's mission. And so if you guys are understanding and supportive of that, I would love it if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to join this community. I think that I have had an attrition rate you could say the last few years where I think a lot of the conservative Christians who come to my channel have realized that that is not exactly what I am representing and they've left I've lost a lot of subscribers and that's okay with me um, but I've also in the meantime gained just as many subscribers because I think that my community that I'm developing is kind of going through an adjustment and as people realize who I am and what I represent, I think that that is repelling certain people and attracting other people. And I understand, you know, it's never been about the numbers for me on YouTube. I really couldn't care less if I lost 10,000 subscribers. As long as I had a positive, loving community here, that's all that I care about. So I'm fine seeing that my channel go through that change right now. <sighs> Whew, we made it through that. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. That was a real doozy. I really appreciate you listening and taking the time. I know your time is precious. So thank you for listening to my story. And please, in the comments, tell me your story 
Um, have you had a similar experience? I just ask that you please keep it kind and respectful in the comments. I have gotten nasty comments in the in the past and I just delete nasty comments because ain't nobody got time for that kind of toxicity in your life. <laughs> but as long as it is respectful, I'm open to many points of view and am always willing to have an open-minded discussion. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.